Starship flights 7 and 8 boost ended in fireballs this year, so expectations were high for flight 9. Unfortunately, it didn't have a happy end either. Still, there's reason to look to the future with optimism. Hi, I'm Sven. Normally I write the scripts and handle editing, but due to current events I'm narrating this one instead of Tom. Before the launch, Elon Musk gave an interview to the YouTube channel Everyday Astronaut, stating but What we're hoping to achieve today is uh, we want to obviously get the, uh, like, like by far the most important thing is the, the, the high heating phase of, of re-entry um, and see how the tiles perform uh, during the, the, the hypersonic max heating yep. and uh you know and, and also on the asc basically so this is a, think of this as the as the as a tiles mission the launch itself was picture perfect it's always a majestic sight to see the booster lift or the starship mounted on top at 2 39 into the flight stage separation worked flawlessly the starship's engine ignited without issue shortly after a SpaceX engineer was heard on the radio confirming the chamber pressure looked normal. The booster, flying for the second time, was not scheduled for capture, but intended to land into the ocean. 29 of its 33 Raptor engines had been reused. SpaceX aimed to test a higher angle of attack for re-entry and evaluate the engines using less fuel for the landing burn. At 6.15, they attempted to reignite the booster's engines, but it exploded just two seconds later. From 15 or 4, we could see the payload bay or starship carrying Starlink dummy satellites. These were scheduled to be released at 1750, but there were issues with the payload door. The flight was also marked by numerous camera failures, with error screens appearing multiple times. At 3850, at an altitude of 127 kilometers, it appeared that starship was losing heat sheet tiles during re-entry. This became especially apparent at 4154, where a camera angle suggested a large area of the heat shield tiles had been lost. Around 4224, SpaceX confirmed that the vehicle had experienced a leak at an altitude of 100 kilometers, leading to a loss of attitude control. The Starship ultimately disintegrated at 4622, at an altitude of 64 kilometers, crashing into the Indian Ocean. Conclusion: Three failures in a row don't look great. However, it's worth noting there were no engine failures this time. SpaceX had enough confidence in booster recovery to experiment during this flight. Vibrations also seemed reduced compared to prior attempts. Even though there was a leak again, this flight lasted significantly longer than the infamous 8-minute mark of previous launches. The fact that the heat shield withstood re-entry as long as it did despite the loss of control, it's promising. Most importantly, SpaceX gathered valuable data throughout the mission and will undoubtedly apply it to make major improvements.